This is Sheikh Mohammed Al Yakubi. He's a Syrian Islamic scholar and comes from a family of Islamic scholars. More importantly, he's the 34th grandson of Muhammad, Prophet of Islam. Notice two things about Sheikh Mohammed Al Yakubi. First, this is the whitest man you've ever seen in your entire life. Second, his glaring whiteness lines up perfectly with descriptions of the original Muhammad. As I noted in a previous video, Sahih Muslim 6071. It was narrated from Al Jurairi from Abu At Tufail. I said to him, Did you see the Messenger of Allah? He said, Yes, he was white with an elegant face. This guy is so white, he makes Queen Elizabeth look like Queen Latifah. And the Muslim sources go out of their way to remind us how white Muhammad was. They tell us about the whiteness of his shins, and the whiteness of his thigh, and the whiteness of his leg, and the whiteness of his stomach, and the whiteness of his forearms, and the whiteness of his armpits, and the whiteness of his cheeks. Not only was Muhammad history's whitest prophet, he also owned, bought, sold, and traded black slaves, referred to Ethiopians as raisin heads, and said that Satan looks like a black man. His followers went on to institutionalize black African slavery a thousand years before the United States even existed. And yet, after every instance of racial tension in the United States, Muslim preachers move in to offer Islam as the solution. But how could a religion founded by a white prophet with black slaves ever be viewed as a solution to racial tensions? The answer is that, in the 1960s, when Islam was spreading rapidly in the African-American community, Islam's most trusted sources on Muhammad's life and teachings just couldn't be found in English. This allowed Muslim preachers to say whatever they wanted about Muhammad and to adapt their message to the situations of their listeners. But times have changed, and Islam's sources are available, in English, to anyone with an internet connection. These sources don't even attempt to conceal the fact that, for Muhammad, trading slaves was equivalent to trading animals. Our generation has the privilege of correcting the misrepresentation and deception that was spread among previous generations. If you'd like to learn more about correcting false claims that Islam promotes interracial harmony, be sure to watch the full video.